Recall that a linear equation is an equation like, for example, 2x minus y equals 1. It's an equation without any x squareds or y squareds in it, something that could be rewritten in the form y equals mx plus b, the equation for a line. A system of linear equations is a collection of two or more linear equations. For example, I could have these two equations. A solution to a system of equations is an x value and a y value that satisfy both of the equations. For example, the ordered pair 2, 3, that means x equals 2, y equals 3, is a solution to this system because if I plug in x equals 2 and y equals 3 into the first equation, it checks out since 2 times 2 minus 3 is equal to 1. And if I plug in x equals 2 and y equals 3 into the second equation, it also checks out. 2 plus 3 equals 5. However, the ordered pair 1, 4, that is x equals 1, y equals 4, is not a solution to the system. Even though this x and y value work in the second equation, since 1 plus 4 does equal 5, it doesn't work in the first equation, because 2 times 1 minus 4 is not equal to 1. In this video, we'll use systematic methods to find the solutions to systems of linear equations. In this first example, we want to solve this system of equations. There are two main methods we could use. We could use the method of substitution, or we could use the method of elimination. If we use the method of substitution, the main idea is to isolate one variable in one equation and then substitute it in to the other equation. For example, we can start with the first equation, 3x minus 2y equals 4, and isolate the x by adding 2y to both sides and then dividing both sides by 3. I think I'll rewrite that a little bit by breaking up the fraction into two fractions, 4 thirds plus 2 thirds y. Now I'm going to copy down the second equation, 5x plus 6y equals 2, and I'm going to substitute in my expression for x. That gives me 5 times 4 thirds plus 2 thirds y plus 6y equals 2, and now I've got an equation with only one variable in it, y. So I can solve for y as a number. First, I'm going to distribute the 5, so that gives me 20 thirds plus 10 thirds y plus 6y equals 2. And now I'm going to keep all my y terms, my terms with y's in them, on the left side, but I'll move all my terms without y's in them to the right side. At this point, I could just add up all my fractions and solve for y, but since I don't really like working with fractions, I think I'll do the trick of clearing the denominators here. So I'm going to actually multiply both sides by my common denominator of 3 just to get rid of the denominators and not have to work with fractions. So let me write that down. Distributing the 3, I get 10y plus 18y equals 6 minus 20. Now I'll add things together, so that's 28y equals negative 14, so that means that y is going to be negative 14 over 28, which is negative 1 half. So I've solved for y, and now I can go back and plug y into either of my equations to solve for x. I'll plug it into my first equation. So I'm plugging in negative 1 half for y, that gives me 3x plus 1 equals 4, so 3x equals 3, which means that x is equal to 1. I've solved my system of equations and gotten x equals 1, y equals minus 1 half. I can also write that as an ordered pair, 1, negative 1 half, for my solution. Now let's go back and solve the same system, but use a different method, the method of elimination. The key idea to the method of elimination is to multiply each equation by a constant to make the coefficients of one variable match. Let me start by copying down 
my two equations. Say I'm trying to make the coefficient of x match. One way to do that is to multiply the first equation by 5 and the second equation by 3. That way, the coefficient of x will be 15 for both equations. So let me do that. So for the first equation, I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. And for the second equation, I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. That gives me, for the first equation, 15x minus 10y equals 20. And for the second equation, 15x plus 18y is equal to 6. Notice that the, the coefficients of x match, so if I subtract the second equation from the first, the x term will completely go away. It'll be 0 times x. And I'll be left with, let's see, negative 10y minus 18y is going to give me minus 28y. And if I do 20 minus 6, that's going to give me 14. Solving for y, I get y is 14 over minus 28, which is minus 1 half, just like before. Now we can continue, like we did in the previous solution, and substitute that value of y into either one of the equations. I'll put it again in here, and my solution proceeds as before. So once again, I get the solution that x equals 1 and y equals minus 1 half. Before we go on to the next problem, let me show you graphically what this means. Here I've graphed the equations 3x minus 2y equals 4 and 5x plus 6y equals 2, and we can see that these two lines intersect in the point with coordinates 1, negative 1 half, just like we predicted by solving the equations algebraically. Let's take a look at another system of equations. I'm going to rewrite the first equation so that the x term is on the left side with the y term and the constant term stays on the right. And I'll rewrite or copy down the second equation. Since the coefficient of x in the first equation is minus 4 and the second equation is 3, I'm going to try using the method of elimination and multiply the first equation by 3 and the second equation by 4. That'll give me a coefficient of x of negative 12 in the first equation and 12 in the second equation. Those are equal and opposite, right? So I'll be able to add together my equations to cancel out x's. So let's do that. My first equation becomes negative 12x plus 24y equals 3. I multiplied everything by 3. And my second equation, I'll multiply everything by 4. So that's 12x minus 24y equals 8. Now something kind of funny has happened here. Not only do the x coefficients match as in, with opposite signs, but the y coefficients do also. So if I add together my two equations in order to cancel out the x term, I'm also going to cancel out the y term. And I'll just get 0 plus 0 is equal to 3 plus 8 is 11. Well, that's a contradiction. We can't have 0 equal to 11. And that shows that these two equations actually have no solution. Let's look at this situation graphically. If we graph our two equations, we see that they're parallel lines with the same slope. This might be more clear if I isolate y in each equation. The first equation, I get y equals, let's see, dividing by 8. That's the same thing as 4 eighths, or 1 half x plus 1 eighth. And the second equation, if I isolate y, let's see, minus 6y equals minus 3x plus 2. Divide by minus 6, that's y equals 1 half x minus 1 third. So indeed, they have the same slope. And so they're parallel with different intercepts. And so they can have no intersection. And so it makes sense that we have no solution to our system of linear equations. This kind of system that has no solution is called an inconsistent system. In this third example, yet a third behavior happens. This time, I think I'm going to solve by substitution because I already have x with a coefficient of 1, so it's really easy to just isolate x in the first equation and then plug in 
to the second equation to get 3 times 6 minus 5y plus 15y equals 18. If I distribute out, I get the strange phenomenon that the 15y's cancel, and I just get 18 equals 18, which is always true. This is what's called a dependent system of linear equations. If you look more closely, you can see that the second equation is really just a constant multiple of the first equation. It's just three times. Every term is three times as big as the corresponding term in the first equation. So there's no new information in the second equation. Anything, any x and y values that satisfy the first one will satisfy the second one. So this system of equations has infinitely many solutions. Any ordered pair x, y, where x plus 5y equals 6, or in other words, x is minus 5y plus 6, will satisfy this system of equations. That would include a y value of 0 corresponding to x value of 6, or a y value of 1 corresponding to an x value of 1, or a y value of 1 third corresponding to an x value of 13 thirds just by plugging into this equation will work. Graphically, if I graph both of these equations, the lines will just be on top of each other. So I'll just see one line. In this video, we've solved systems of linear equations using the method of substitution and the method of elimination. We've seen that systems of linear equations can have one solution when the lines that the equations represent intersect in one point. They can be inconsistent and have no solutions, that corresponds to parallel lines, or they can be dependent and have infinitely many solutions, that corresponds to the lines lying on top of each other.